Hi, Chris here. I'd like to, in this video, talk about the four elements, which are the you can look at as the basic principles of uh, keeping us healthy and uh, what makes the human body work. Um, this goes back to uh, our ancestors. They knew the, the basic principles of uh, uh, earth, water, air, and fire. Um, they didn't really have to think about it because they always had to they will access that without even thinking because they were in an um, environment, natural environment that catered all those four things. But because the way we live today, we're, uh, we're a more de domesticated race uh, and species, is that we've created environments that we have to think about getting these four elements now instead of it just being a way of life. Um, since we've been domesticated, which means uh, man or woman of the house, that's what domestication means, is um, we're not getting the clean air. We're not um, accessing spring water from, from the earth, which the earth is the number one purifier of water. It knows what how to purify water. That's where we get um, all our water purifiers are all uh, copies on based on what the crust of the earth and the earth does with filtrating um, toxins and uh, debris out of water that come up through springs. Um, and then the earth, touching the earth, um, uh, seeing the earth as being sacred with um, uh, food, you know, which absorb all the nutrients out of the soil and therefore we eat the life form and uh, absorb those nutrients into our body and as well as fire which is plasma energy which we get from the sun so that's states of matter fire water earth and fire we can look at earth as being solid we can look at water being liquid and we can look at air being the gases that we breathe inhale and exhale out and fire is the sun and that's plasma energy we can look at that as plasma so we need to eat all four states of that equally and equal components. There's a lot of people out there that focus so much on the right diet, but they're not getting clean air, they're not getting enough sun exposure, and they're not connecting to the earth. So we need all four of them equally. So we need to eat life forms. We need to eat life forms that are from animal source. We need them from plant sources. We need them from fungi sources, and we need them from bacteria as well. So we'll get into it a bit more a little later on about those four components. We need to also, we eat solids, we, we drink li liquids, and we breathe in gases, and we require photon energy that we get from the sun. Now, I'm going to, this is a perfect example of this. This is a, an analogy with a fish tank. So when we have a fish tank, we have fish in there, the, the fish need water, right? and they need to be fed, and we feed them. They need that little um, thing that bubbles, makes the water bubble. That's the gases, the air supply going into the water. And we also need the lamp thing, that lampshade that's on top, which creates sun. So the fish need all four components of these states of matter. So if we gave that fish the best food, organic food we could possibly give, but we hooked up the air supply to uh, a cigarette. Now, would that fish be healthy? It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be. What about if we gave the fish the best air supply, but we didn't give it any sunlight, any light at all? Would that fish be happy? Would that fish be healthy? It wouldn't be. So we all we need all four components. So. Our body is an incredible, miraculous machine. Like when it takes in water, water comes out in the form of urine. It, it goes in as a solvent and then removes all waste products out, which we call urine. Now when we eat food, which has nutrients that has been absorbed from the soil, soil comes out, which is feces. When we breathe in air, we inhale air, we inhale gases, air also comes out, and gases come out. So there's an exchange of different gases, 
we breathe in oxygen, we breathe out carbon dioxide. And then when we uh, absorb light, pho photons from the sun, we radiate infrared light out. So we are essentially a filter. Now, when we go into Earth, the first state of matter, we can talk about grounding. And I've done a video about this before. When we touch the Earth, we absorb electrons from the crust of the Earth, which have been bombarded with lightning strikes. And that's a great way to reduce inflammation. So we're absorbing energy from the Earth by touching it. We also get nutrients from the Earth, which is, are in our soil, which are broken down in the form by microbes, which are then released into plants that we eat and then also animals eat the plants and then we eat the animals and we get those those goodies and those nutrients. So our digestive system, when we think of the digestive system, it's just a tube. Now we have skin, our lips are made of skin. This is all skin. And then we go when we go into our mouth, it's skin. When we go down to uh, down your throat, skin. When we get to the stomach, skin. It's smooth muscle tissue. Then we go into the small intestine and the large intestine. It's all skin. It's small. It's smooth muscle tissue. Then we get to the bottom end, which is your anus. It's skin, and it gets connected to the outside of your buttocks, which is skin. So essentially, our digestive system is one long tube. Okay. So when we put food down the tube, does food get into the body? It doesn't. Because if the food got into the body, that's what's known as an infection. But what we do is we put it down the tube, and all our bacteria supply, our friendly bacteria, our gut flora, break down all the food, so that all the nutrients can then be absorbed through the smooth muscle tissue, the wall of that tube, into our bloodstream. So... And when we, the foods, are what we need to eat, we need to eat from four places. We need animal food source, we need plants, we need fungi, and we need bacteria. Now we need an animal source of food because, especially for fat, our ancestors, when they killed an animal, and there were, there were a lot of sacred rituals around killing an animal, because they knew in a survivalist mode that they needed certain nutrients from the animals. And they would always eat the organs first and they would eat the fat first because they knew the importance of that tissue and the, the vitamins and the minerals that were in there. They were very mineral rich and they had uh, certain fat uh, soluble vitamins like vitamin A that you can't get anywhere else other than an animal source. With plants, we also need plants. Do we need to eat plants? Plants are our... Um, original pharmacy. All the micronutrients. There's a lot of macronutrients within animal foods, but in plant, plants it's micronutrients, trace minerals, um, certain elements, um, like organ elements, um, ormus elements, which we'll do another video about discussing ormus. 80% of the drugs that we give out today as our pharmacy all came from plants originally. They were extracted certain compounds and chemicals from plants to create uh, these drugs that we have today in modern medicine. So plants and especially herbal plants like herbs which are wild plants are very um, nutrient rich. Now fungi, we need fungi because it modulates our immune system. And when I'm talking about fungi I'm not just talking about the little mushrooms you get on your pizza, I'm talking about medicinal mushrooms. Medicinal mushrooms such as reishi, chaga, uh, lion's mane, um, cordyceps, uh, um, shiitake mushroom. These modulate our immune system. So if our immune system's low, it builds it up. If our immune system's um, uh, in hyperdrive, which we call autoimmune illness, it modulates it down. So it's very clever, uh, medicinal mushrooms. Medicinal mushrooms and fungi are actually closer to us than plants. They have neurotransmitters like we do. And we need neurotransmitters to think. So if they've got the same neurotransmitters as us, 
you know, it, it does pose the question that can they think like us? Also, mycelium, which is a fungi, is what bounds the soil together. It's the intelligence of the soil. Also, what mushrooms do, and fungi do, if you lay them out in the sun to dry, they absorb, they use the photon energy to absorb vitamin D just like we do as well. So it's another good way of getting vitamin D into you is putting mushrooms out in the sun and it will absorb the photon energy of the UV radiation to uh, manufacture vitamin D. So very, very uh, interesting fungi kingdom. And another kingdom that we need to eat is bacteria. So friendly bacteria. Because that modulates our gut flora, which is a very important for the immune system as well. Um, at the moment, in uh, science, anywhere from 80 to 90 percent, they say that friendly bacteria uh, are 80 to 90 percent of our immune system, which is a huge component. So we need to be uh, not afraid of bacteria, and we need to be eating things like sauerkraut, fermented um, veggies, um, kimchi. Um, uh, kombucha, which is like a, a beverage that you can create from um, uh, from wild yeasts and bacteria, and also things like kefir from uh, dairy foods. You can um, make like a kefir or yogurt, and you can do that also with coconut water and also um, coconut milk as well. Now that's to do with earth. Now we're going to move on to the second one, which is water. Now water. When we consume water, straight away it absorbs into our bloodstream. It doesn't get, doesn't doesn't go through the digestive system. It goes, it gets sucked into our bloodstream. So, our water makes our blood. So, there's a lot of information out there about you know, how how much water we need to drink. Well, we need to be thinking also about the quality of the water we're drinking because if the quality of the water makes up our bloodstream, we sh you know, our bloodstream is is everything. You know, it's, our bloodstream is so important. It's, it uh, channels all the nutrients that we have uh, to make sure organs and muscle tissue, uh, nervous system tissue, everything work properly. So blood is mainly water. The component plasma of our blood is mainly water. So when it comes to water, a big no-no is drinking water from plastic bottles because plastic bottles leach out minerals and uh, petroleum uh, chemicals into the water which we can't metabolize we can't break down and, it, and as a filter our body they just stay in our body we can't get it out of our body our organs can't break down these particular um, chemicals that we get from uh, these things leaching from the plastic bottles into our water. So it's a big no-no. Try and drink out of glass um, and definitely when it comes to plastic bottles don't leave the plastic bottles out in the sun because that will make it leach even more into the water. And quite often you'll drink that water in a plastic bottle and it all tastes like plastic. We call this a xenoestrogens because a lot of the plastic and petroleum chemicals mimic estrogen, the hormone estrogen. And which hyperfeminize women even more, and they and it feminizes men. So uh, men uh, don't have as much uh, androgens in the body, which are like testosterone and stuff. Or men start to put on more uh, fat uh, on certain areas of the body, uh, like breast tissue, for example, um, and so on. Now the next component we're going to get into is air. So air and all the gases that we're breathing, obviously because we are a domesticated race, we're living and spending a lot of our time indoors. And the air that we have in our house and indoors is 98% more polluted than the air that we have outside. So getting out in nature and getting outdoors and breathing there is very important. Because when you think about it, the human body can go without food for some time. We can we need water more than we do need food. What do we need more than water? We need air. We need oxygen. All these gases that we're getting from breathing. 
So the air that we breathe is vital. So if we are going to be spending a lot of time indoors, how can we create the air to be cleaner and more like the air that we have outside? So house plants are important. House plants um, reduce uh, toxic material that's get off gassing within the the um, within the, our homes, like. Uh, um, plasticizers and things that are made of plastic and our computers and all that are always off-gassing materials that are toxic to the human body. So having um, house plants is very important and um, they'll absorb that stuff out of the air and then create a cleaner air. Another thing is getting an iron uh, ionizer which emits negative ions like you do when you're connecting to the earth and touch